What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Savannah and if you're new here, welcome. Thanks so much for stopping by. In today's video, we are adding the snow leopard to River Rock Zoo. This will be the very last habitat, the very last brand new habitat that we add to River Rock Zoo. And I know, I know every time I say that, people uh, leave comments saying how sad they are. But to be honest, you guys, as uh, just a Planet Zoo player, I've kind of finished River Rock Zoo. I'm I'm done with with building in this project. I'm ready to move on to to other things, spread my creative wings, and I do have lots lots planned for us. So this will be the very last brand new habitat, but we will be going over to the polar bears very soon because I've said for a very long time that I've just been waiting for the polar bears to be able to deep dive to finish the interior and kind of rework their habitat a little bit because I really wanted to show that off. And we are getting that uh, effective uh, tomorrow. 1.6 does come out with the new uh, Africa pack launch that's happening, like I said, tomorrow when you're watching this video. So we'll be diving into that very, very soon uh, and showing that off. But then that will wrap up River Rock Zoo. Uh, um, that'll be it for us. Before we jump into talking about the build, I do want to take a second and talk about a product that I was sent by the wonderful people over at Ben Q, and that product is the Screen Bar E Reading Lamp. Ben Q reached out a while ago to see if I was interested in reviewing their product, and I'll admit, at first, I was a bit skeptical because I've never used a monitor mounted light before and I didn't really know what to expect. However, after using it for the last couple weeks, I am fully convinced and I actually use it every time I sit down at my computer. This light is super easy to use and doesn't cast any glare on my screen, which is actually what I was most worried about. And I do have to say, as a content creator with a full-time day job, I do most of my gaming and editing at night, so having some extra light cast on my keyboard and desk space has made a huge difference for me. The screen bar lamp retails for about 99 US dollars, which is a bit of a hefty price tag, I do have to admit, but I will also say that after unboxing the lamp, getting it all installed, it does feel incredibly well made, and it sits super nice on top of my monitor. There are touch buttons all along the top of the light, which allow you to change both the brightness and the tone, which is super cool because it allows you to make the light fit your space and what works best for you. The light also just uses a normal USB plug to plug in. So I have my light plugged in directly to my computer, but if you're running low on USB plugins on your actual computer, you can also use an adapter and plug it into the wall directly into an outlet. If you're interested in checking this product out, I've included some links down below in the description box and just want to say thank you again to Ben Q for allowing me the chance to review this product. Now let's get back to some Planet Zoo. So with this build as usual I'm working off a reference picture and it was a reference picture for like a jungle dome habitat. I can't remember what zoo it came from but essentially it was just kind of this um, off kilter like circular. It's not really a dome but it's just all encased in glass and I figured that you know although yes the zoo Zoos around here in my area, right, in California, in um, North America, that's kind of where River Rock Zoo is set. We do have snow leopards that just live out in the climate that we have here because San Diego has a very uh, easy climate for many animals to survive in, but I thought that maybe we wanted to add an indoor space for the snow leopards in River Rock so that we could have uh, snow. So we do add some of the snow rocks on the inside towards the very end, but that was kind of the idea because maybe we could keep it uh, a little bit cooler of an area for them. Not necessarily, like I said, because they need it, just because I thought it might be cool design wise. I will say I don't do too much for the guests in this build. It's a fairly simple build as far as that goes. Um, we do add some education boards at the very end End, but really, honestly, I've mainly focused on the inside. Um, and I'm a little bummed that we actually finished this habitat before 1.6 comes out because I'm pretty sure we might be getting some fence pieces. There was a little comment from, I think, either one of the developers on the forums is what I'm thinking of. And they kind of just put in parentheses like metal fences or chain link fences. I forget what they actually said, but kind of hinted at that that might be coming in the free update 
1.6. So I'm super excited about that, but wish we would have had those uh, if they are coming to the game because in this build, we use the barrier inside that like metal uh, barrier and it goes up on, there's an upper portion and this will make a lot more sense when we actually get there. Um, but I had to kind of close it off with rocks and I wish I could have closed it off with more fencing. You just can't have fencing like above the ground without it reaching the ground. And I needed there to be a gap because there is a glass viewing area for their little den. But anyway, we're starting work on the actual kind of dome part here. And I don't, it wasn't too difficult, you know, just using the circular symmetry and uh, um, just a lot of copying over and, and repetitive stuff. Um, looking back, I probably could have just used the, oh no, you know what? I couldn't have. I was going to say, I probably could have just used the gridded glass pieces, but we end up tilting this whole thing. And that's why I remember as I was watching this, I was like, why didn't I just use the gridded pieces? It would have saved on piece count been a whole lot easier and that's why is because uh because i wanted to tilt it so we needed to use everything off kilter or everything off the grid so that we could make it off kilter uh and not a 90 degree to the ground it did take me a few tries um i'm still getting used to using the circular symmetry trick uh or i guess I, not really a trick just like getting used to using it and and how all the pieces uh rotate and where their center of rotation is um you can see one thing that i will suggest and that i always try to do is i took a section just of the two pieces and i put it off to the side and that way if i made a mistake i could go back and adjust it like you see me doing here without having to rebuild the whole thing or if i've done too much and I can't control Z all the way back. But that way I kind of have the start of whatever it is I'm building. So if I need to use it again or make a different copy or like I said, make adjustments, it's there. So if you are trying to do something with circular symmetry, I do kind of recommend uh, utilizing that trick. It actually works really, really well for me. Um, we start off, you can see out the front here that I have those temple wall pieces that are upside down that are used as the flooring. I love the texture on those, but I think I end up changing it out for concrete um, because it just, it didn't fit River Rock. Um, and this is where one of the reasons why I'm kind of ready to move on to other projects is because I have so many other ideas and River Rock is a very stylized zoo, right? It's a very modern North American zoo and I want to be able to use some of the other pieces that we can't really use in River Rock with it looking right. So that's one of the main reasons why I really do want to get into another project is because I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to move in to do other things, use pieces that we don't normally utilize and build for some animals that we haven't built for yet. Um, River Rock Zoo is also getting fairly large um, and not, my computer's not really struggling. Um, it was, I actually realized I had some things installed on the wrong drive and I was running out of memory, but I had so much memory on my second drive. Anyway, long story short, I fix some computer techie things and my computer's running much better now. Um, but still, River Rock Zoo is getting fairly big and I'm kind of just ready to move on. It will be going up on the gallery, uh, or not the gallery, sorry, the Steam Workshop. It will be going up on the workshop. I am not doing any sort of finishing off as far as like putting a border around the zoo or anything like that. Some of the guest areas are still a little bit blank, but I want to put it up on the workshop for you guys so that you guys can take it and can continue it, build off of it. You can steal things from it. All, everything is fair game. I am totally happy for you guys to go in, make blueprints of stuff, use it in your zoo, piece it together, take parts of it out. However you want to build with it, it is yours to have fun with. I am so excited to see what you guys do. The only thing that I ask well, two things rather that I ask is one that you give credit if you are using it and building things with it. Um, do give credit because, you know, it's the respectable thing to do. I try very hard to give credit to um, all the workshop items that I use in my builds uh, because people work hard on their projects and they deserve the recognition. But two is to show me. I would love to see what you guys do with this, any improvements you make, any changes you make, all that kind of stuff. I would love to see it. So you can either uh, send me a picture, uh, um, tag me on Twitter, tag me on Instagram, or send a picture if you are part of the Discord. We have a channel for Planet Zoo Builds. You can share it in there. Uh, I just, yeah, I just want to be able to see what you guys do with the zoo and, and uh, see where you guys take it. I think that would be really, really fun. Um, back to talking about a little bit about what we're doing with the build here, utilizing those font pieces. And there's something that I forget 
all the time. I totally forget to use them um, and that they even exist and that they're flexi colored and that the like the full stop one is is super useful with teeny tiny detailing things. Um, so I, I utilize those just as a framing piece along with the plaster on the roof. Um, a very simple roof. I made this pretty chaotic so I kind of gave myself no choice but to flat roof this build because uh, none of it's square, none of it is symmetrical, none of it is easy to roof. Um, so I kind of shot myself in the foot with that one but we made it work by just doing a flat roof um, and it turned out really well but uh, yeah like I said I, I had really no other option. We added a little bit of uh, like detail with raised roofs in the back just so it's not completely flat uh, but yeah it's there was really no other way to do it. So as we kind of watch the build unfold and things come together, let's go ahead and talk about our wonderful little snow leopards. Big cats are my favorite animal. And you guys, if you're not new to the channel, you'll know that the African lion is my all time favorite animal, has been for pretty much my whole life. Um, I love big cats. I love uh, cats in general. Um, and the snow leopard's no exception. And I think these guys are fascinating. I know I say that about a lot of different animals, but it's true. I do find them very fascinating. So I have the San Diego Zoo's website pulled up and let's just talk about them a little bit. So snow leopards are rarely seen in their native habitat as they live high in the mountains of Central Asia. Although the cats freely cross the international boundaries of 12 countries, their secretive behavior and remote habitat among the highest mountains in the world world add to their mystery. This also makes them really hard to study in the wild. There's really not a lot that we know um, for certain or have captured. Maybe it's more now, but it makes it really hard to watch like their natural behaviors in the wild because they are so secretive. They're high up in the mountains where people can't really get to very easily. Um, so it does. It makes them really difficult to study. Because of their shy and uncanny, almost mystical ability to disappear here among the rocks, snow leopards have entered the folklore of local peoples in the countries and have been described as shape-changing mountain spirits. Snow leopards are almost impossible to locate and study in their native habitat, like I just mentioned, <laughs> because they blend in with their surroundings so well. At the extreme conditions of cold and steep terrain, often beyond the limits of human endurance, and it is extremely difficult to radio tag snow leopards for conservation research. And that's such a bummer because they do need that conservation help. Right now, they are marked on the IUCN red list as vulnerable, um, but they do need our help to make sure that they stay stable and um, are able to successfully thrive in the wild. So how do snow leopards live at high altitudes? They keep mainly to the cliffs and rocky slopes below the permanent snow line. Snow leopards have relatively small heads with short, broad noses that have large nasal cavities that passes cold air through and warms it. Their huge paws have fur on the bottom that protects and cushions their feet for walking, climbing, and jumping. The wide furry paws also give the cat great traction on the snow. I don't know if you guys have seen this too. Other animals have it as well. Like dog breeds, like huskies, will have um, hair in between their paw pads and it really helps keep their feet uh, warm and protect protects it from the snow. Um, it's really interesting that I actually didn't know that their like nasal cavity specifically is made to warm the air as they breathe it in. It makes sense. Like when you go out in cold climates, my nose certainly gets cold from breathing in all that cold air. So that's really interesting. Short, well-developed front legs and chest muscles help with balance when climbing. The snow leopard's incredibly long, thick, and beautiful tail also helps with balance and is sometimes as long as the cat's body. This is something you can definitely see looking at them, even in game. They have really long, floofy, beautiful tails that are pretty much the same length as their body. Um, talking about where they're climbing and all these cliffs and rocks and things was also a driving factor behind, or I guess an inspiration uh, for this habitat. I really wanted to make uh, a really rocky uh, kind of habitat so that they have a lot of stuff to jump on, climb on, all that kind of stuff, because that kind of simulates what they would have in the wild. Although this, I'm not calling this habitat realistic in any way. This is not super realistic of a habitat as a whole, but that's kind of where the inspiration for all the rocks and things came from, is I really wanted to make sure that they had everything to, uh, to climb on and uh, run around on that kind of simulated their natural environment as best to our ability. 
So the last information I want to touch on for our snow leopards is of course their conservation information. Although I did say that the IUCN red list has them listed as vulnerable, nobody actually knows for sure how many snow leopards actually do remain in their native habitat. And this is largely because like we were talking about before, how difficult they are to actually study because of the challenging terrain, at least it's challenging for humans, but challenging terrain so that we can't, we can't get over there and, and study them. And like it said, it was difficult to radio tag them. So we don't actually know. It it is estimated that there are no more than 4,000 to about 6,500 of these cats in their entire range. Historically, habitat remoteness served to protect the snow leopards from humans, particularly conflicts with herders and farmers. Indeed, there are no known snow leopard attacks on humans as the cats would rather run away than fight. But with human encroachment into the high mountain ranges comes competition for living space and food. The snow leopard's beautiful coat has also been its undoing as they've been hunted for their fur until numbers became severely reduced. Many countries have banned the import of snow leopard fur, but the trade persists, primarily because of human poverty. And although snow leopards are listed as an endangered species, oh, okay, so maybe they have updated it, which would be fantastic if they had. Um, if you guys are not aware, the differences between their categories on whether endangered, vulnerable, threatened, and things like that, actually having a species labeled as an endangered species does open up a little bit more help for that species as far as like funding and, and some government help and stuff like that um, opens up the potential to uh, have programs that help them out. So I would actually be pretty happy if they were uh, listed as actually endangered species because it, it, it would help them a little bit more. Not that I want them to be decreased in numbers, but having that title um, definitely helps with some of the conservation efforts. But it says they continue to be hunted for their bones and organs too, which are used in traditional Asian medicines. Mining activities also continue to degrade habitat, forcing snow leopards and their prey to move into less suitable areas where they can come in conflict with human efforts to survive in the harsh mountain habitats. So overall, I think the snow leopards are a super fascinating species. I hope you guys too. I hope you guys enjoy the facts. Um, if you know anything more about the snow leopards or any fun facts that you want to share, please do let me know down in the comments below. Uh, before we go back to talking about the bill, just a couple of fun facts that they have on their website, the San Diego Zoo website, um, it says sure-footed climbers, snow leopards have been seen at altitudes as high as 18,000 feet in the summer because again, they stay right below the snow line, right? Snow leopards can jump and pounce on prey as far as six times their body length. The snow leopard's long, thick, and luxurious tail acts as a built-in comforter when the cat wraps it around its body for added warmth. I love watching that animation in game. They do curl up in a little ball and it's super, super cute how they sleep, but it's funny to hear them describe it as a, a comforter because <laughs> it is nice and fluffy and I'm sure it helps keep their little paws warm uh, as, they, as they sleep. But anyway, back to the habitat that we're building. So we are almost done here, just adding a few of these little details, uh, minimal details to the guest area, getting the barriers in place. Little fun fact about this one, although it wasn't fun when it was actually happening to me, but I built this interior twice. So we built this on stream. And for those of you that don't know, we do stream every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It was a wonderful stream. We got so much done. We streamed for about two hours on Sundays when we do stream. And it was pretty much finished at the end of the stream. I just needed to do some of the detailing like we're doing now with finishing up some of the interior and the guest spaces. And for the first time ever, I must not have saved it before I closed the game. I must have just been that hungry after my stream and just closed it, not saved it. So when I opened it back up, I was thinking, I just need to sit down for a couple more minutes, you know, and just kind of finish these things up, take some cinematics, that way we can get the video put together. And I opened it up and the entire interior of the Snow Leopard habitat was blank. And I was so, I was so upset and I was so disappointed. 
<laughs> for those of you that do obviously play video games, losing your progress, at least for me, is like one of the most frustrating things ever, especially when it was something as time consuming as this, because I already sat down, I already did it, it was perfect the way it was, and then I had to redo it. So anyway, like I said, a little fun fact, fun story, although it wasn't fun when it was happening, uh, that I actually had to build this twice. So hopefully it ended up, uh, at least I did the best I could, uh, having it end up kind of similar to what we did on stream the footage that you're watching is the stream footage uh, so this is how we built the habitat in the first place uh, so there might be some teeny tiny slight differences from when you actually see this either at the end cinematics or when you download this on the workshop when it does go live and that is why that's the biggest mistake that I've made in a while but now we're on to the part where we're just adding some of the finishing details and then we're gonna move outside do a little bit of landscaping outside not too too much much. The outside is fairly simple. Um, again, because I just mainly wanted to focus on the inside of the habitat. That's really what I was having fun with, but I didn't want to leave the outside too blank. So we're just bringing over some of that foliage that's around the zoo, um, trying to keep it on theme and, and make sure that it all kind of fits cohesively with one another, uh, all the habitats rather, that it looks like a zoo project and not pasted down habitats. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. We only have just a few more minutes left of this speed build and then there will be end cinematics as usual and then of course when this goes live on the workshop I will make sure to let everybody know it'll go up as a zoo file it won't go up as individual habitats but you guys will be welcome to download it and do whatever you'd like with it so thank you again so much for watching I really do always appreciate the support comments and likes to go a long way with helping the channel and every single one of them is greatly appreciated appreciated. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Keep up with the channel because as I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, we have the African pack coming tomorrow and I have big, big plans. I'm super excited for you guys to see what I've been working on, what I have going on behind the scenes. And yeah, thank you. That's all I have to say. I will talk at you in the next one. Bye.